Hello again, everybody. It's Jerry Slater for another session of Your Town at Work. And we're here up at our NCM studios with my new friend and program director of Impact Norwood, Aubrey Seal. Hello. Aubrey, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So let's start um, with what is Impact Norwood for maybe the five people in town who don't know what it is? Sure. <laughs> um, so Impact Norwood is a substance use prevention coalition. And that just sounds like a bunch of words put together to mean something. Um, but what it really means is we work with all parts of the community from law enforcement to schools, parents to youth, to prevent and reduce youth substance use. Um, it doesn't fall on one sector. It doesn't fall on just parents or just schools. It's a community responsibility. So the coalition acts as the convener. We work on partnerships to reduce the things that put youth at risk for using substances and increase the things that can keep them safe. And, you know, again, I think we talked about this a little bit before. So that's kind of a broad spectrum yes. because yep. you're not just working on, you're working kind of almost on the whole the, the whole problem, the whole health of mm -hmm. an individual. Yep. So folks that may say, oh, well, I don't know anybody with substance abuse or I would have no need for impact, nor would. Mm -hmm. What else are you doing that may be centered on anyone? Sure. So, I mean, the goal is to make it so in the future people don't know anybody with a substance use issue. You know, we want to stop any problem before it starts. So everybody should be invested in preventing problems before they start, whether it's uh, substance use, violence, anything. Prevention is important and prevention works. Um, but we, we don't only focus on substance use, so we don't just go out and educate students like this is what this drug will do to you, this is what that drug will do to you. We want to build positive community because when youth are engaged in their community, they're far less likely to engage in using substances before um, they're legally able to do so. So we focus a lot on mental health promotion. We focus a lot on um, bringing or providing opportunities for youth and adults to come together. Um, we have a community game series um, where youth and adults will play a sport together such as dodgeball or soccer. Um, so it's just a, an alternative evening activity, but it's also building that youth and adult relationship. So it's really something for, for everyone. Everybody, from that yep. And uh, you know, we're going to come back to some of the, the, the different, because you've got a lot of unique services. Yep. Um, COVID yeah. has kind of <laughs> changed, <laughs> broad, shall we say broadened your focus a little bit? I think so. Yeah, I think it's put more of an emphasis on mental health. Um, so one of the things that we do as a coalition, before we say like, okay, let's do this because that will prevent youth substance use, we go through this whole process of gathering data so we know what the problems really are and what's causing those problems. And one of the, the things we identified was um, that when youth are experiencing poor mental health, they uh, sometimes use substances to cope. So that's not a pos positive way to cope. And COVID has just highlighted how important mental health is because even for someone who has good mental health is certainly feeling the effects of this pandemic. So um, we've, we haven't we have shifted away from substance use prevention, but we're putting more of an emphasis on promoting positive mental health and encouraging people to find alternative coping mechanisms uh, rather than reaching for a substance. So it's almost like getting ahead of the problem, if you will. Exactly. Right, before yep. you can even. Um, and I mean, there, we'll talk about your website in a second because there are some fabulous resources on mm -hmm. it. But I want to take a step back sure. and talk a little bit about you, Aubrey. Sure. <laughs> and we joked a little bit before about Aubrey is um, used to asking the questions, <laughs> not answering them. Yeah. But um, how about, how did you scroll backwards a little bit for sure. us? How did you come into this role? Where you know, where did you go to school? Mm -hmm. How did you end up in Norwood? All these, sure. all of that. Um, so I'll try and make it kind of short. Um, but so I, I went to Simmons College, or now Simmons University in Boston, 
and I studied international relations and economics. I was a dual major, and um, sorry, my mask keeps <laughs> falling down. <laughs> sure. Oh goodness. Um, and I had every intention. I wanted to work for the State Department. I wanted to be a diplomat. I was really fortunate. I had the opportunity to study abroad when I was in high school. Um, and I was just really passionate about the world and, and helping underdeveloped countries. Um, so I got my degree, I graduated, and I was looking for jobs. And I found a job at a, an organization called in Education Development Center. It's mm -hmm. in Waltham, Massachusetts. And they had three divisions at the time, and one was an international development division. The job that I found was not in that division, but I applied because I said, all right, it's a way to get my foot in the door at the company. The job that I applied for was for a national training center on prevention. Um, I was an administrative assistant, worked my way up to research assistant. I worked there for about five years, and then um, through that time, I worked on uh, the National Training Center for Substance Use Prevention. I worked on a teen pregnancy prevention project with sites across the country. And I also worked on a local training center for substance use prevention. So it was a Massachusetts system. Um, and being there and being around public health professionals and prevention specialists, I felt like a sponge. I just mm -hmm. absorbed so much and I absorbed their passion for this work. And I fell in love with prevention work. Um, I have a couple family members who struggle with substances. One uh, struggles with alcohol and the other struggles with opioids. And it's like, if I can do something to help stop this before it starts, this is where my heart lies. So I kind of fell into the work, um, but I'm really happy that I did. And um, how did I get to Norwood? So <laughs> I, um, about five years ago, Actually, this month, um, I met my partner, Chris, when I was traveling for the Teen Pregnancy Prevention Project. Uh, he was out in Colorado, and uh, he decided to move out here after a year of dating, and I was living in Watertown at the time, and uh, I was just getting so sick of being so close to the city. Mm -hmm. As I got older, I got further and further away from <laughs> Boston. And I have a couple friends who lived in Norwood, and they had nothing but good things to say about it looked at apartments. I was like, all right, I'll move there. Um, and then I was working for a prevention project in Quincy, worked there for about two years, and I saw the job opening for the position in Norwood, and I didn't think I was going to get it. It's like, oh, I'll apply anyway, we'll see, and here I am. <laughs> so kind of a convoluted way of getting to where I am, but I'm here, <laughs> and I'm happy to be here. Well, that's awesome. And everybody has a story. Um, I love the fact that, you know, how your passion um, kind of led you on the path yeah. to, to change, change your career focus. Yep. And, you know, do something that, and I, you know, obviously your enthusiasm for what you do makes, makes all the difference. Yeah. Yep. So, and, I, oh, sorry. I, no, I, no, I don't think that, uh, so community, um, engagement and working with different parts of the community. I actually learned a lot in those international relations courses because you need to be diplomatic when you're you're dealing with uh, different people in the community and different personalities. So um, I feel like that actually prepared me while I'm not working internationally. Um, a lot of what I learned prepared me for the role that I'm in now. You know, it, 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 that is uh, very, very well put, yeah. <laughs> especially in a community like Norwood, yeah. because, you know, we are, um, there are a lot of different cultures, a lot of different yeah. people. Um, you also, um, like, um, I'll admit to the fact that I am a carpet bagger as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you don't know. Um, it's, it's, it's almost refreshing to kind of come in and say, okay, I, I don't have yeah. any preconceived notions. I had no idea what carpet bagger meant before I moved to Norwood, so now I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of, part of the phenomenon yeah. here, for sure. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so let's, let's uh, segue back a little bit to Impact Norwood. And um, some of the things, first of all, the website, um, talk a little bit about um, what you might find on that. And then 
if you wouldn't mind just go into you you do you're doing podcasts yes, which yeah. are <laughs> such a cool thing mm -hmm. such a different thing a different way of communicating i'd like to hear a little bit i think the community would love to hear about that sure uh, so our website, um, when we were awarded the Drug Free Communities Grant in 2017 with that funding, um, they were able to bring me on. And I say they, it, it's under the health department, it's housed in the health department. So that's where the, the grant funding goes. And then I run the coalition. We should um, say we should oh, yes. say that Impact Norwood <laughs> does report out through the yes, health department. Yeah, yeah, Seagal Reese is my supervisor. All roads lead to Seagal, right? Exactly, she's amazing. Um, but uh, we needed a place where people could go to get information about the coalition um, and resources. So we were able to start the website. On it, you can find a little bit about the coalition, what we are. There's a short PSA. There's uh, some resources explaining what prevention is, why it's important, and it has risk factors and protective factors. So I get jargony when I talk about that, but uh, the things that put youth at risk for using substances and the things that keep them safe. It has some examples of that. Um, there are uh, resources for local recovery services, support groups. Um, there's material about the different substances and why using them before our brains are fully developed can be really detrimental to your health and your growth and development. Um, and there's also ways to get involved. We uh, are rolling out a, a tiered volunteer system. So no matter the amount of time you have, you can volunteer with us. Um, so the website has a lot of information about that. And then uh, going back to COVID, <laughs> at the beginning of the pandemic, one of our steering committee members, Teresa Stewart, approached me and she said, I think we need a toolkit. We need something with a plethora of mental health resources. Um, so we put together, I don't know how many pages it is, but it's just a toolkit full of resources and that's available on our website as well. So I would definitely encourage people to check So why don't out. you give us the URL? I know that we're probably sure. gonna have it under you <laughs> anyway, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's just www.impactnorwood.org. Yep, Super. and uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to navigate, so. You and I, I, you know, we were talking about this. We're going to get to the podcast in a second, but there's even a playlist up oh, on there, yeah. <laughs> which I was, you know, I have to admit that I, I, I checked it out. Yeah, it definitely. Uh, I was calmer afterwards. Oh, so good. I'm was, really glad to hear that. That so was that if was you the were goal. going for that, I, I found that. So <laughs> yeah. all, all sorts of tools to yep. your point. Uh, yeah, and the the playlist I. So I like to turn to music. I, I have depression and anxiety and you know I manage it, but sometimes if I'm feeling kind of down, music is the place that I go to for just feeling calm and it makes me feel not as alone uh, because you hear the singers and the musicians talking about mental health. So all of the, the songs on that playlist are about mental health. Um, so I hope that people find it helpful. I did. Yeah. All right, podcasts, yes. which is something <laughs> a little bit different. Yeah. Um, how did that come about, and what are you doing on the podcast? So it came about, we, a couple of years ago, and I think 2018 it started, we did this whole speaker series. We brought in speakers to talk about adolescent brain development, um, mental health, and our turnout wasn't always great. We had a good number of people in the room, but it wasn't what I wanted it to be. And through some research and looking at surveys and just talking to people in the community, parents and guardians are so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are running around, you know, working, raising kids, bringing them to soccer, band, what have you. And going to an event at night is probably the last thing people <laughs> want to do. I mean, when I get home, the last thing I want to do is go back out. I'm getting in my pajamas and I'm you know, vegging. <laughs> um, so we wanted a platform for people to learn things about substance use prevention, um, but in a way that they could do on their own time. And what's nice about the podcast is you don't have to sit down and watch a video either. You can put it on in your car and listen to it as you're driving around town. And we also try to keep the, the podcast episodes short. So I think the longest one is about 40 minutes. Um, but you can listen to that in a day, you know, just driving around town. Um, 
so that was the purpose of, of doing the podcast. And some of the content that's on there, we were talking about one of the, the most recent ones, yeah. which is a little bit yep. different. Huh? So, uh, so far we have four episodes up right now. Um, we did one on public health with Seagal, um, because that's kind of the, you know, the basis for prevention work and everything. So we started with her. We have one about self-compassion. Um, and people might be wondering, well, how is that related to substance use prevention? I can make an argument to tie anything back to, to substance use prevention. Um, and we have one on mental health empowerment. And our most recent one was with one of our coalition members, actually, Derek Jackson, on uh, race, racism, and how to be more unified and create more racial unity in, in our community and across the country. Yeah, very, very, very timely topic. Yeah, yeah. Very he's, timely. Yeah, he's great. So before we end, um, you had talked about it a little bit earlier. It takes a community. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the things that you really emphasize with Impact Norwood is involvement, mm -hmm. um, looking for volunteers. And there are many different ways to do that. How would someone go about doing that, getting involved? Yeah, so the first thing, check out our website and see what we're all about. Um, and then on the website, we... Um, We'll have events posted for community forum type meetings. They don't happen all the time, um, but anytime there is an open forum for anybody in the community to attend, that will be listed on our website. People can also just email me, um, aecl at norwoodma.gov. Um, I'm happy to talk with anybody who's interested and uh, get them orientated to the coalition and then they can just dive right in. Super, any, any last things that I don't think so, yeah. yeah. I'm hey. gonna ask you, because you do this on the podcast, <laughs> what is something funny that has Ooh. happened? <laughs> do, oh. do you have one, you have one? Man, oh. now I know why this question is so hard to See? answer, because I can't <laughs> think of anything funny. Um, oh, all right, so I'm really into creating like a very calm ambiance in my home. So I, I found these really beautiful, long, long string lights they're like Christmas lights, but you can have them year round. I did not think the purchase through because I have a cat and they were hanging over my bed. So for about a week, I was silly and left them up. And every morning, you know, half asleep, I would feel her on my shoulder kind of going at the lights and half asleep, I would just pick her up and move her with one hand away. And we finally moved them out to the living room so we wouldn't get woken up in the morning. But long stress Christmas lights, not a very good purchase when you have a, a mischievous cat so <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's been entertaining <laughs> a little bit annoying <laughs> yeah, well, you know whatever it takes during these when we're all you know spending a lot more time in our home yeah. right yep so Super. that's pretty funny <laughs> all right Aubrey Seal program director for mm -hmm. Impact Norwood it has um, been a pleasure thank you for yeah, joining thank us thank you so much for having me we will have to catch up more and, and see what's going on as you keep keep going with uh, new and innovative things yeah. and um, the great work that you're doing for the community. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, and um, we'll be back with my new friend, Holly Jones, who is the new conservation agent and environmental planner here in town. <laughs> Come on, yes, I think it's gonna win. Oh! Yes! <laughs> Norwood Community Media produces weekly live coverage of government meetings, sports games, town events, and much more. You can access all of our live content on our live stream at norwoodcommunitymedia.org. Here's how it works. Type norwoodcommunitymedia.org into your web browser. This takes you to our website where there are three options of live stream to watch. Our community live stream carries Norwood news, Norwood High School sporting events, and other town events. To access news bulletins and event reminders, please visit our bulletin board live stream. For live coverage of local government meetings, you can visit the government live stream page. Once you've decided which stream you need, simply click the box with the title and then click the play button that appears and you will be watching live NCM coverage. Thank you for choosing your home for all things Norwood, Norwood Community Media. Today, we are going to do two of our favorite things at your town at work. One is meeting somebody new, and the second is being at a beautiful location here in our town. And we love to come out and, and take a shoot. And our new friend today is Holly Jones,
who is the new, and let me make sure I get this right, environmental planner and conservation agent for the town of Norwood. Welcome, Holly. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here in Norwood and so happy to be here at Ellis Pond today <laughs> on, in this beautiful weather in November. We're, so we're going to talk a little bit about the locale, but let's let's talk about your role here in our town. So it's a little bit different. Um, you've replaced longtime conservation agent, and now you are both environmental planner and conservation agent. So what do you do? Yeah, that's a great question. I do all kinds of things. Uh, one of my main roles as conservation agent is supporting the Norwood Conservation Commission, which in itself has a lot of roles. They do a lot of permitting for construction projects that are building near wetlands or near rivers to make sure that those natural resources stay protected. Uh, and I kind of handle all of the administrative processing of making sure that uh, those applications are complete and the commission has the information they need um, doing site visits as well to, to get photos for them um, and then issuing permits on behalf of the Conservation Commission and following up as those projects go through their full construction process as well as the occasional um, and luckily in Norwood it is occasional um, if we have enforcement situations where someone is working near or in a wetland without those proper permits from the commission. Um, and then the environmental planner side uh, is closely related still to the work that the Conservation Commission does because they also, in addition to permitting, have a role in kind of planning and advising uh, around issues related to conservation in Norwood and so um, and they also own a number of properties including actually the property that we're on right now and so part of my role is helping to make sure that those properties are stewarded correctly. I had the privilege this past Saturday of being part of a work day here at Ellis Pond where members of the Conservation Commission and neighbors who live around the pond all came out together and we cleared the trail uh, which wraps around that way and we actually worked to take some of the vegetation off of the dam because those roots can grow in and endanger the stability of the dam over time. Um, so those types of stewardship projects, uh, more long-range stewardship projects like the one I'm really excited about for the winter, which is starting the planning process for uh, trails and more of a park at the St. Street lot, which, mm -hmm. which the town recently purchased. Um, and then you're working on other aspects of long-term environmental planning for Norwood. So one of the things I'm looking to do um, in the spring along with the Department of Public Works and some of the other planning folks is really focusing on stormwater uh, because with a town that has as much concrete, as much roofs as Norwood does, a lot of times when we get a lot of rain, it does. it's not able to seep into the ground and that means that you have a lot more risk for flash flooding like we saw this past summer uh, and so trying to find ways to maintain our stormwater infrastructure and get that water to actually seep into the ground recharge the reservoirs and stay in the soil in Norwood rather than going straight into rivers and out to sea so it's actually a resource rather than a, a risk is something I'm really interested in and um, folks will probably be seeing at the next town meeting. Um, also looking at making sure the the floodplains in, in Norwood are protected um, to the best that we can do. Um, so, and then working kind of with a lot of the other um, environmental oriented groups in Norwood 
um, to, for example, the Trails Committee planning trails, which certainly overlaps with the Conservation Commission's work. Um, and um, I, I haven't been involved with the MVP planning, but I am certainly excited to do that uh, as well. And we'll see. That's, that's what's, what I'm thinking right now. But I know things will pop up as we go forward as well. Yeah, so. Hopefully not another flood. So one no of the other floods. things that you, you do, the Conservation Commission meets every two weeks or so? Yeah, twice a month. Yeah, so you pretty much are the center post of that meeting as well. And, you know, shameless plug, of course, we all, we carry those meetings on yes. NCM. So um, we love those. And I'm very grateful that you do. Uh, right now I'm doing the minutes for the Conservation Commission, so I rely on on the videos that you all produce to, to make sure my minutes are accurate. <laughs> and that's where we see, a lot of times that's where we see some of the enforcement stuff too, because there, there's a hearing aspect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I've, it's interesting the planner um, part of your role, and we were talking a little bit before, and you said that's really kind of the way the position is going in a lot of towns now, kind of taking the proactive approach. Certainly flooding here in Norwood is, is a big deal. Um, we're fortunate that we don't have a lot of um, construction going on, but you know, what do you see with that environmental planning piece? What's the most important thing that you could contribute with that? Well, I think the most important thing that I can contribute is being a good listener and trying to to meet with everyone who's involved in Norwood and see what other people's priorities are. So I don't need to be the priority setter. And I think that I'm doing the best job that I can if uh, a lot of people are getting involved in the planning process and are able to, to be a part of it and because uh, you know, I'm, I'm new to Norwood, um, and so everyone who has been here uh, for their whole lives or for, a, well, you know, or just for a year, um, you know, there's a lot of folks who have a lot of good ideas and see the needs of the town um, who can participate in those types of processes. It's, it's a little harder now uh, with COVID than it was before maybe uh, but I think there's still avenues to make that happen so that's something I'm excited to to work on well super so let's let's hear a little bit you you said you know new to Norwood September I believe you started yeah um, tell us a little bit about Holly um, where you were before uh, where you hail from your background yeah well I grew up in Vermont and I came to Massachusetts for college. I graduated from Clark University both for undergrad and my master's degree in environmental science and policy. Uh, so that's in Worcester in central Massachusetts. Uh, and this is actually the first job I've had that's outside of central Massachusetts. So I have a whole new river, <laughs> a whole new watershed to, to learn about. Um, but it has a lot of the same issues that I've seen uh, across the state. Um, we have a boom behind us that's catching some detritus from water chestnuts, uh, which is something that I you know, struggled with in my previous position at uh, as a conservation agent in the town of Uxbridge uh, and see, I still actually live in Worcester, so that's something I see in Worcester as well. Um, so right before I came to Norwood, uh, I worked as, as the agent in Uxbridge, which is right off 146 bordering Rhode Island for folks who don't know. Um, Mass Pike's exit, right? Mass Pike exit for Uxbridge, right? No? I'm pretty sure there's a sign for it, but maybe, that's okay. Maybe. That's okay. Um, but, and then I had a variety of, of environmental positions before that. I actually worked 
in the lab at a wastewater treatment plant immediately before, um, which was really, I think, you know, I was talking about the importance of stormwater before, um, and that kind of gave me an insight into our, our utilities and the environmental importance of those types of utilities. Um, I also worked on the Asian longhorn beetle eradication project in Worcester, which thankfully no Asian longhorn beetles in Norwood. Um, I was getting flashbacks a little when we got that notification about keep your eyes out for spotted lantern flies. Uh, so everyone keep your eyes out for spotted lantern flies. We don't have a population that we know of yet in Norwood, but one dead spotted lantern fly has been found. Um, and then uh, I have worked also doing general surface water monitoring across the state, um, making sure, you know, checking on on kind of just doing sampling of how's the dissolved oxygen and how's the um, turbidity and all those types of parameters for rivers across the state just to kind of get an assessment of where we are. All right, so, so I'm going to put you on the spot. Great. Because we've been talking, we've, we've been talking about a lot of technical stuff. What's one fun fact to share about Holly Jones? One fun fact. The funnest fact about me is not me, it is my dog. Uh, I have a very large dog named Tigger. Uh, he's a 95 pound lab pit brindle mix. Um, and he likes to steal your socks and carry them around in his mouth and redistribute them around the house. So that's, that's Yes. That's, all right. So will we will be be seeing him around town or he doesn't like other dogs. Okay. So I have to be pretty careful about where I bring him. So I'm probably not going to take him to work unfortunately. All right. Because we are here and wow, we've got the swans in the background. Yes. Who have showed up. Um we have the geese over there. Uh what you know, what What's the future here? What do you see happening? More is there? Are there more projects to play at Ellis or? Well, I don't want to speculate because I might make people mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, there's there's some things that are going on right now to protect the water quality. I mentioned the water chestnuts and the Conservation Commission is actively treating the pond for water chestnuts and trying to, to um, get rid of aquatic invasives as well as other invasives that are around the pond. Um, not everyone knows this, but the town actually owns uh, land that rings the whole pond. Um, and so it's possible that there may end up being a trail that extends further around the pond in the future, um, but I can't say for sure. I know it's something a lot of people are excited about the possibility for, um, although also a lot of folks who live on the pond are a little nervous about the idea of having people walk right past their backyard. Right. So that's been a discussion I know has happened in the past. Um, one thing that I know myself and other folks in town are looking into is actually further up the watershed is Willet Pond. Uh, and Willet Pond is right on the border of Norwood. So there's no great way for Norwood residents to access it. Um, while still being in Norwood. So I know that folks are looking into ways to potentially get access to Willet Pond as well so that people can enjoy that the same way that they enjoy Ellis Pond. Um, well, that's, yeah. that's a lot. So it sounds like, um, and again, we have so many beautiful spots here in town. 
Um, we are so happy to have you with us, Holly, and it seems to me like you certainly are looking to see how we can have more people in town enjoy these beautiful spots. Um, yeah. Make them last for quite some time. If someone wants to get a hold of you, um, Town Hall, and you... you yeah. I'm in Town Hall. Uh, right now, Town Hall is open by appointment. So the best way to reach me is you can email me at conservation at norwoodma.gov or you can call Town Hall and ask them to transfer your call down to me. So um, I that's, that's actually a very important part of my job that I neglected to mention. So I'm glad you asked is I'm, I'm kind of a resource for people in Norwood who either have questions about land and recreation or have questions about uh, some of if if the wetlands protection regs might apply to them say you uh, live near Ellis Pond if you're very lucky um, you know and you want to do a small project um, you know you please call me and ask um, about, you know, do I need permitting for this or uh, am I able to just go ahead and I, I can help guide people through some of those questions because it is a pretty complicated state law and then we have the town bylaw as well um, and it's hard for for someone who's just a, a lay person to uh, fully know um, what all the details are so i'm i'm here to help residents navigate through that process as well super well we wish you the best of luck thank you again for joining us on this beautiful day in this beautiful place um holly jones the new environmental planner and conservation agent here in norwood thank you for having me on the show it's been a pleasure to speak with you for your town at work i'm jerry slater well, it's been a great show, everybody, and we have met uh, Aubrey Seal and Holly Jones. Really appreciate the work that they're doing here in town. So until next time, I'm Jerry Slater for Your Town at Work.